This is one of the most life-changing books I have ever read. I first came across it when I was 14 years old, and ever since, I've read it at least one time every single year. The core idea of the book is that you could take responsibility for the relationship with any other person that you interact with. And you could do that by changing your own behavior and how you listen to the other person. It teaches you the principle for how to better empathize with other people, come across as more likable, and improve overall your relationships. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the seven most important principles that you can learn from How to Win Friends by Dale Carnegie. The first principle is never criticize. The second principle, give honest and sincere sincere appreciation. This means when you observe somebody else, really pay attention to them and find something to appreciate that is genuine and unique and you truly appreciate that thing about them. The more specific, the better. Number three, whenever you're having an interaction with someone and you want to achieve an outcome, arise in the other person an eager want. Don't convince them to do the thing because it's important to you. Convince them to do the thing because it's important to them. And the way to do that is to ask them questions about what their preferences are and then match their preferences with whatever you're offering. And so let's say you're negotiating a deal. Make sure that you negotiate a deal that is not just a big win for you, it's a big win for them. Number four is remembering people's names. People's favorite word in the dictionary is their own name. So one easy trick to do this is to immediately find something that rhymes with their name when you meet them. The other thing that I always make sure to do if I meet someone and I want to be friends with them is I'll take my phone at the end of the interaction, like, hey, let me get your number. And I'll put my hand on their shoulder typically. And then I'll give them my phone open to the contacts page and they'll put in their name and their phone number. And then I'll immediately text them my name so they have my contact information. And then if I want to hang out with them, I'll immediately suggest, hey, do you want to grab coffee at this date? And people almost always say yes. And then, you know, you've built a friendship. Now you've met a second time. But also, we'll always put a note in the labels section saying, you know, Cliff, black hat, red shirt, Evernote event in New York. And then if I ever want to remember someone's name, I have another app in my phone that organizes my contacts by the date in which I put them in my phone. And so I'll go to the date of the event, I'll look for the label of the right person, and I'll like, ah, his name was Cliff. Five, avoid arguments. It's actually surprisingly easy to avoid arguments. And here are the two ways to do this. Number one, if you feel the temperature rising in your body, if you know that you're about to get triggered, disengage. And sometimes, you know, if I'm with my girlfriend or if I'm with my brother and I'm getting annoyed, I'm like, hey, I am not in the right space to keep talking. Let me take a little break. I'm gonna listen to an audiobook. I'm gonna listen to the music and I'll come back. Number two, when you're having an argument, don't sit across from the other side of the table with the person to debate the person. You're debating the topic. So take your chair and move it to the other side of the table, both physically and emotionally and mentally, and manipulate the problem together until you find a solution. You're on the same team. So make sure whenever there's a disagreement, you reframe it so you're on the same team. And last one, be a good listener. Shout out to Speechify. How do you be a good listener? Number one, spend more time listening than talking. Secondly, lean in. Engage, be an active listener. One of the best people I've ever talked to over Zoom is Reese Witherspoon. And the woman is expressive with every part of her face when you talk to her. I couldn't believe it. I felt so listened to, so listened to. It was an amazing feeling. Be the person that provides that experience to other people who engage with you. These principles are just scratching the surface of the amazingness of the principles that are inside this book. So if you want to learn how to be a better communicator in general, read this book. And if you want to practice being a good listener, I'm gonna tell you a secret. We have a very exciting new feature that is launching inside of Speechify called Audiobooks. If you get the Speechify subscription, you're now gonna get access to thousands of books in the public domain for free. In addition, coming soon is the ability to buy almost any ebook and audiobook inside of Speechify. So if you wanna practice being a good listener and active listener, go to Speechify, try out a new audiobook. You can listen as fast or as slow as you want, and you can see the words while you listen with your eyes. You can highlight, annotate, it's an amazing experience. This video is part of a series about me breaking down some of my favorite books. The next book in the series is the four-hour work week by Tim Ferriss. You can click here to check it out. With that, happy listening.